I'm Boris the Bee Guy, skiing here on the snowy frozen forest lake right next to my forest beehive apiary in central Maine. My beehives are still covered with snow, but the bees are doing well, and by mid-April they should be out foraging. I have fewer than 10 beehives, right next to a large 3,000-acre wildlife protection area, and the bees have plenty of spring to fall natural foraging in and around the apiary, so I don't have to supplement their naturally foraged nectar and pollen with any artificial sugar feeding. By the way, do you know that honey is the third most faked food in the world, just behind milk and olive oil? This news is from Business Insider, and all references are in the description of this video. For honey, there's one very simple way, at a glance, to see if the claims of raw and natural on the honey jar label are false. You don't even have to open a jar for that. You see, fresh, real, raw, natural honey starts out as a liquid. This is our pressed, raw, all-naturally foraged honey from forest beehive apiary, and initially, this honey is in a liquid state, as it's supposed to be. But real, raw honey that has not been artificially microfiltered or adulterated in any way would remain in its initial liquid state only for a very limited time, typically no more than three months, before it crystallizes and solidifies. For real, raw, non-microfiltered honey, gradual crystallization is an inevitable, natural process that does not impact its taste or health benefits in any way. And if you prefer a liquid texture, the best and the healthiest way to liquefy a crystallized honey is by using a slow and gentle warm water bath. For naturally forged honey, its speed of crystallization depends on what flowers the bee is foraged on. For example, pure sunflower honey crystallizes after three weeks. Most wildflower honeys, including ours, would crystallize after three months. Only very, very few, relatively rare and high in fructose and cloyingly sweet pure honeys like European acacia and tupelo honey would crystallize after one year. So let's say you see the same regular jar of liquid claiming to be raw natural honey sitting on the same store shelf for more than three months, or maybe it's well past harvest time, for example, it's winter, and you see a jar of some liquid that is advertised as natural raw honey on a store shelf, don't buy it, run from it. Despite the label claims, it's not real natural raw honey. If it were real raw honey, it should have crystallized by now. And if this jar label claims were truthful, this is what the label should have looked like. To create an illusion of freshly harvested honey, large-scale honey producers use various artificial methods to prevent honey from crystallizing. In large-scale beekeeping operations, one common method to artificially slow down honey crystallization is by ultrafiltering, a process that removes natural pollen and thereby strips away most of honey's beneficial vitamins, minerals, nutrients, and enzymes. About 40% of the world's honey is now produced in China, where during ultrafiltering, the honey is heated and sometimes watered down and then forced at high pressure through microfilters to remove all pollen. Per FDA, if honey is ultrafiltered such that it doesn't contain pollen, it isn't real honey. Ultrafiltered honey has close to zero medicinal properties. According to Food Safety News, 100% of honey tested from U.S. drugstores, Walgreens, Rite Aid, and CVS Pharmacy was missing pollen. Removing pollen also hides where that particular honey had originated. According to Food Safety News, honey exporters from China for years were illegally dumping tons of their cheap, low-quality honey on the U.S. market. More than a third of all honey consumed in the U.S. is estimated to have been smuggled in from China and many of its samples were found to have been tainted with illegal animal antibiotics and heavy metals. A food safety news investigation has documented that millions of pounds of honey from Asia banned as unsafe in dozens of countries are being imported and sold in the U.S. in record quantities. After Chinese honey was identified by pollen and many samples were found to contain the most awful additives like illegal animal antibiotics and heavy metals, Chinese honey exporters have further refined their artificial technique of ultrafiltering to completely remove all pollen from honey. To conceal the origin of their honey, Chinese honey exporters also started mislabeling their honey before distributing it worldwide. Despite U.S. tariffs that temporarily disrupted tons of Chinese honey from entering the United States, 
Chinese honey sellers found an indirect roundabout way, now mostly through Vietnam, to dump even more of their now mislabeled, cheap and lowest quality syrupy honey to the United States. And sadly, quite a few honey distributors, not only in the United States, but also in Brazil and European Union, in order to increase their profits, are now quietly adding significant portions of Chinese-originated honey to their own supposedly local honey. I'll briefly mention another artificial method to stop honey from crystallizing and give it a false appearance of freshness. It's adulterating an already overfiltered honey with such unhealthy and often unsavory ingredients as corn syrup or worse. Now, Dr. Leo Sharashkin presents this photograph at horizontalhive.com. This picture was taken in 2019 in Montreal, and it's from the official competition for the Best Honey in the World Award. Honey jars with a card in front were disqualified after lab analysis found sugar, illegal antibiotics, or evidence of overheating. And if these contaminated honey samples were presented for award nominations for the best honey in the world, you can only imagine how bad things must be then with the regular honey sold in stores and at farmer's markets. Now let's explore if honey produced by extensive sugar feeding of honeybees can legitimately be claimed as raw and natural. When honeybees forage naturally and collect nectar and pollen only from real flowers in a natural habitat, each flower imparts its own essence, its soul, and its unique flavor and taste to the honey the bees make. What if instead of natural foraging, these honeybees were heavily sugar-fed in order to increase the size of the honey harvest? Would heavy sugar feeding affect the taste and quality of the honey these bees make? In beekeeping, the quality and taste of raw natural honey often differs significantly between large-scale commercial beekeeping operations and small-scale local beekeepers producing small batches of honey. Large-scale commercial beekeepers are mostly driven by business costs, they produce large batches of honey for sale, and are mostly focused on honey quantity versus its quality. Sometimes, even small-scale local beekeepers would produce two very different batches of honey, one large, low-quality batch for sale, and the other small batch of great honey for their own family consumption. When I was 11, my grandma and I were guests of honor at a beekeeper's house. And while giving us her honey, the beekeeper said that she would be treating us like family. And instead of giving us the regular honey from her sugar-fed bees that she sells at farmer's markets, she would treat us with a much better honey from her separate small batch from a very few family-only beehives where the bees were never sugar-fed. And the taste of that honey is still in my memory. Those bees produced 100% naturally foraged Great tasting honey without that same boring industrial style aftertaste you get from tasting most store bought syrupy honey. Sugar feeding the bees can quadruple the harvest, as the more sugar they are fed, the greater the harvest they produce. High honey quantity comes at the expense of its quality and taste and health benefits. Beekeepers, whose bees only forage naturally, often refer to that mass produced low quality honey from heavily sugar-fed bees as funny honey. Sadly, most consumers worldwide are unaware that they've only ever encountered an unauthentic funny honey. Most consumers have never experienced the true taste and health benefits of authentic 100% naturally forged honey, rich in bee bread and made by honeybees that were never fed sugar, never treated with chemicals, and never forged on farm fields heavily sprayed with pesticides. As I just mentioned that naturally forged honey has bee bread, let me explain what bee bread is. Bee bread is what the bees feed their young with. It's a tasty, nutrient-packed and protein-rich aromatic substance containing a mix of honey and pollen fermented with bees' enzymes. Bee bread is present in the brood nest and can only be safely collected by beekeepers who do not treat their bees with any chemicals. Bee bread has micro and macronutrients a lot of iron and vitamins. We always have some bee bread present in our honey and it substantially increases the pollen count and enhances the taste and nutritive value of honey. So what's the taste of real raw honey that's 100% naturally foraged? My PT Damn. sent this video Damn. here tasting our forest beehive honey for uh, the first time. This might be the best honey 
I've ever had. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's coming out of me. to just a purist. I'm going to put y'all on. Just, you're just going to just hold on to, just, you know, pause it, check it out. This is crazy. And I mean, there's so many benefits, but thank you so much. Thank you so much for the gift. Thanks for watching. Please give like and subscribe.